Welcome back, everybody, to the Kansas City Royals franchise here in MLB The Show 21. In this episode, we are going to be making trade deadline moves. There's going to be a couple that we make. It's going to be a surprise to you guys on what moves that we might make here. So I will say one thing. We are not getting rid of Salvi. We're not getting rid of Whit Merrifield. Those two guys have been integral pieces as to why we're even in the discussion of possibly being a buyer here at this deadline. However, I'm going to spoil the fun, and I'm going to say that we're not close to being a buyer this season. We are six and a half games back of the Indians, three and a half back of the Twins. And then when we look at the wild card situation here, we've got the Rays, the Twins, Blue Jays, and Red Sox to worry about. Obviously, the Athletics and Rangers are ahead of us there. Astros as well. So we've got a lot of teams that are ahead of us. We're five games back of the wild card spot. You could argue in some circles this would be a pretty contentious topic if the Royals in real life should be buying or selling and if you want my opinion guys I think we need to sell so not only did Danny Duffy get hurt we could have traded him as well but Mike Miner is the next best option to go get rid of we need to move on from Mike Miner he's 33 years old He's regressing with the hits per nine. Walks per nine getting up there a little bit, you know, and as far as increasing. But he's been pitching well. 71 strikeouts, 18 walks. He's 7-5. and five. He would fetch a really good value as a left-handed pitcher for somebody in a playoff race. Now, again, we could keep somebody like this. We could actually hold on to our pieces, and we could sell some of our prospects to go get a guy, go get a veteran piece that's going to help us in the now to push for those playoffs and those wild cards, but those wild card spots, but I don't think that that's reasonable. I don't think it's smart. I think what we need to do is focus on building this team the right way, not selling your future for a shot at the playoffs, given the roster that we have currently. So we are gonna actively look for a trade for Mike Miner. We're also gonna be actively looking for a trade for Carlos Santana. And namely, because Santana is going to go bye-bye here, I really want to see what O'Hearn and McBroom are made of. Nick Prado is hurt. I really thought about moving him up to the AAA level now that McBroom is starting to hit a little bit more down there. We called him down. We moved him down to the AAA level early in the season simply because he wasn't really cutting it. But I want to see what these two guys can actually do before trying to really focus on first base for the long term because I mentioned the very beginning of this series that first base and third base were two positions these corner positions that I felt we don't really have a franchise changing player at any of these positions so before we go out and we address first base through offseason through offseason trade through drafting next season I want to make sure that O'Hearn and McBroom are given an actual opportunity in order to show me something before we go out and we just say that they can't do it. You know what I mean? Third base, I feel like we've given enough shot for Hunter Dozier and Alberto. Kelvin Gutierrez down there in AAA, not really going to do too much. 26C potential. I feel like third base is a position that we know what we're going to get. First base, I want to see a little bit more. So Santana and Mike Miner will be the two guys that we are actively going out and going to put on the trade block and see what we go get. So let's dive right into the trades that I've researched. And I've got some analysis here for you guys as well. Some real actual analysis on swings and actual player footage from YouTube. So the first trade that we're actually going to do is the Mike Miner trade. Now, when I'm looking at the teams that I want to make a move with, I really like to do this realistically. So I like to analyze what teams are would be interested in a guy like Mike Miner, a lefty, 78 overall, under contract, and that team is going to be the Washington Nationals. I feel like this team makes a lot of sense for where they're at. They're making a playoff push. They need a veteran arm in that mix. They've got Corbin, the lefty, Strasburg, Scherzer, the righties. Another lefty here with John Lester, but he's a 71 and he's 37, right? So if the Washington Nationals want to get back to that World Series form, I think Mike Miner is a guy that makes sense for this team. Now, what I want to get back here is I want to get back a really good pitcher. So I could go after a guy like Seth Romero, right? But he's a lefty that would kind of fit in with what we're giving up here with Mike Miner. However, I'm going to go with the top 50 prospect in Cade Cavalli. This guy is from Oklahoma. He pitched at Oklahoma in college. 
fastball is really quick. That top velo, he's actually supposed to be hitting around 90, 95, 96, but 94 is more of a conservative look there from right in rosters. But got a really good slider that bites 88 miles an hour. The walks per nine is decent right now, especially for a 22 year old. He's gonna work on that, a potential. Hard to pass up on. I like this player. I really like this player. And you see up on the screen here, you got some footage to look at. I, I think that six foot four frame is really gonna do something for us. He's got that pitcher's body. And I think when he progresses, he should probably get to a 70 overall by next season down in the minors. So I'm really excited about acquiring Kate Cavalli. The next guy that I'm gonna acquire, because you see that we can get a little bit more from the Nats in a trade. I'm gonna go after Sammy Infante. This guy just seems like a very natural swing. He seems like he's got a natural fielding presence about him out in the field. He can play a little bit of everything, can play first at six foot one, third or short. And the reason why I really like this trade is he can do a little bit of everything, right? Nice little utility guy. He's young, the C potential. I'm not too worried about the C potential. I'm not asking Sammy Infante to be the next up and coming you know, superstar middle infielder, but at 43 contact, 50 contact, and then a little bit of power there too, 42, 47, and some pretty decent fielding numbers. I think we can work with Sammy Infante and he's gonna be a nice little player for us, especially considering that our second base group is a little bit, I mean, it's young, but Mickey Lopez, Mejia, they're gonna be the answer after Whit Merrifield retires. You've got Bobby Wood Jr. that can move over to second base as well. You've got Jason Guzman, Nick Lofton, Brady McConnell. So we've got a lot of young infielders, a lot of young middle infielders. What I really want Sammy Infante to work on is first, third, and of course, his more natural position, second and short, up in that middle infield. It's just a nice little player to add for Mike Miner. I think that's the trade we're going to make and they accept. So I'm happy to make that move. I think we won that trade in the long term. I think that's really gonna help us out for the future of this franchise. Now the next move we're gonna make is we're gonna look for trades for Cam Gallagher. Now this is a player that I actually am a fan of. I, I like Cam Gallagher. I don't necessarily want to move on from Cam Gallagher. He's 28, progressing nicely, C potential. You know what you're gonna get from Ken Gallagher. He's been around since 2017. He's a decent hitter. It's gonna provide some good defense for you too. It's just that when we look at where we're at with the team, Salvi's 30, right? He's not getting any younger. Mabry's Valoria had a really good game. MJ Melendez is like the backup, in my opinion, to Valoria. Of course, I wanna see how these guys progress. And in order for me to really feel comfortable in doing that and see how Valoria is going to progress at the big league level, I got to get him more at-bats. Cam Gallagher is not happy. He's actually upset with his morale. And he's just got to go. He needs some playing time. He's got to go somewhere where he's going to be valued. And it's got to be a trade that makes sense for us as well. So we are going to actually go to the Cardinals. And I feel like Gallagher could play over top of Andrew Kneiser. I mean, I, I really do. He's hitting 259, not getting a ton of time here. One home run, nine ribbies, 13 walks. Kind of cold, 6-1. Pretty good defensively, but I feel like Cam Gallagher's a little bit better. Just uh, better of a player, I guess. But, they, I mean, they're pretty similar as it is. But I feel like with Molina, 38, moving on out, Gallagher and Kneiser could end up splitting some time there. He could actually get more time. So it's good for Gallagher to, uh, to leave us. But the guy I'm going to acquire is Evan Mendoza. It's a one-for-one -one type of trade. Mendoza's 23, 69 overall player. Look at the contact. Look at the power numbers. Vision, discipline, defense. Mendoza does it all, right? He can play a little first base, too. Down at the AAA level, he's doing not too bad. Six home runs, 25 ribbies, 279, six stolen bases. He can chip in a little bit of everywhere. Six foot two. Highlights up on the screen, guys. I don't know about the offensive side of Evan Mendoza's game. He's got to work on that. He's admitted to having to try to work on that a little bit harder. Defense just comes more naturally to him. He used to be a pitcher, moving to third base as well. So I feel like this move really makes a lot of sense for us given his age at 23. He's, he's going to actually be our second youngest. He's tied with Rivera to being the second youngest player here at third base position. And really, he's 
right on par with Alberto and Dozier at a 69. He's going to progress down at the AAA level. I like Evan Mendoza. Very nasty defensive player. Can make that highlight real play. We can lock down third base and shortstop with Mondesi and him in the future. I think this is a good get. This is a trade that we're going to pull off. Gallagher goes to the Cardinals. We get Evan Mendoza. That's a good addition for the Royals. Now, this last trade is actually going to involve Carlos Santana and Greg Holland. So the move to get rid of Greg Holland is just literally for cap space because we just don't really need to be spending a lot of money on Greg Holland. Again, we like I mentioned in the very beginning of this series, we need to get younger in the bullpen. It's just too old. And I know that the bullpen is really reserved for those types of guys, you know, starting pitchers that kind of either flamed out or, you know, they only can last a couple innings anyway, so you might as well go a little bit cheaper on your bullpen. But $2.8 million for a guy that's 69, 35 years old, it's kind of a lot in my opinion. So we're going to move on from Greg Holland. We're going to throw him in to this trade with Carlos Santana. Now the Rays, we know they're trying to make the playoffs. We know they're trying to make a push. Santana's rated better than G. Manchoy and Mike Ford, right? So and he's a switch header. He kind of fits in with what the Rays like to do, right? Get a lot of guys on base, play the small ball. Not small ball, I wouldn't say small ball, but OBP, right? A lot of discipline, good power numbers. Santana would be a nice addition for the Tampa Bay Rays. So what are we going to get back? Well, we've tried to shore up the pitching with prospects, and I feel like this is the move that we're going to go out and we're going to make. So it's it's really how desperate are the Tampa Bay Rays to win a World Series? How desperate are they to make the playoffs here this season? They have a ton of pitching prospects. So you guys can see the list here, right? They got Brent Honeywell, right? He's already up in the majors, I believe. Nobody's down in AAA. But 24B, you've got Cole Wilcox, who we could acquire anyway if we didn't want Shane Boz. We could acquire Cole Wilcox. You've got Doxakis. Not going to try to pronounce that. You've got Bitsko that they just drafted last year. you got J.J. Ghost. I mean, they've got some young pitching, and that's what we're going to go after. We want Shane Boz. Look at his numbers, guys. 97 miles an hour at the four seam. Six foot two. Got some pretty good size there. Walks per nine at 42. We can work on that. Home runs per nine, 47. Control, 46. But the velo at 91, that's top notch. Stamina, 76. You can go long distances. I like Shane Boz. Slider's good. Curveball, good speed. Change up at 84. Good drop off from 97 to 84. Plus, he's got a two seamer. Can run in on some right handers. I like Shane Boz. I think this is a good trade. We're, we're saving a lot of money in cap space, right? We're removing $10.8 million in, in exchange for a 65, a potential 20 year old pitcher that's immediately going to vault and slide right in with Kate Cavalli and our young pitching staff that we're trying to build here in the minor leagues. So, good trade all the way around. Rays get a nice veteran bullpen arm. And Greg Holland, now it depends on what they want to do with him. Do they want to call him up or not? That's their choice. But they just got better with Carlos Santana here. He's under control as well. They'll be fine, guys, out there in the AL East. And again, they are currently in their 55 and 49, eight games back from first, but they are in the wildcard race. They're a half game back. So they got to make moves. Got to try to win in the now. That's a perfect move for them. So I feel like we won a lot of our trades and just kind of getting a look and seeing how these guys look in their new uniforms here. We got Shane Baz. We're going to move him up to AAA level. I don't want him sitting there at the single A. That's not my intention at all. But Kate Cavalli, we see him here in AAA. That's good. I like to see that. Um, catchers, yep. We, so we moved on from Gallagher. So that gives Valoria the backup jobs, the, the sole possession of the backup job behind Perez. Second baseman, we got Sammy Infante here down in AAA. And then we got Evan Mendoza sliding in as our third best third baseman down in double A. So I might actually move him up to triple and uh, see how he competes there. He was at the AAA level beforehand. So we'll have to make some moves here. I'll do some digging around and give you guys an update on how they're doing. All right, guys, so we actually did make those changes. So there's Shane Boz at the AAA level. We got Kate Cavalli, AAA. Our new addition here, 
Sammy Infante, AAA level, second baseman, and Evan Mendoza moves up to AAA as well. So, so because we actually have four spots to move guys up and down across our system to come up to the MLB, I want to move Ryan McBroom up to the major league level. He's got six home runs down in AAA. He's hitting a lot better. He's on fire. He's progressing a little bit more nicely than he was when he was playing with us. You guys see his stats here in this season, 183 and some limited action. About 120 at-bats, that was enough for me to make that call. So we're going to give him another shot. And again, like I mentioned, I want to see how he does, given some more time. We can split these guys up. we got O'Hearn that bats lefty. we got McBroom that bats righty. Seems like a good little mix, little platoon thing going on here at first base. Give these guys an opportunity. The thing with our outfield is, is we don't necessarily need to call anybody up to the major league level because we do have Solaire, Dyson, that's two. we got four here with Taylor and Naquin and five. So we have five outfielders right now. We don't really need to make a move until September until the rosters expand. And if we do make a move to move up an outfielder, I'm really looking at like Blake Perkins. He's hitting really well. Maybe Edward Olivares. Not really feeling that one so much. Maybe even Eric Pena, 18 years old, 65A. We could even do that if we wanted to. But I'm a little worried about the service time thing. You know, I, I want to watch out for that. I don't want to get too crazy with some of this stuff. But Perkins would probably be my guy just given his contact numbers, 62, 65 and some good feeling numbers there. Plus he's playing really well right now, 309. How can you argue that? With some speed too, 11 steals, it's pretty nice. Looking here at our shortstop situation, what I really want to do is I really wanted to give Bobby Witt Jr. the call. I feel like a lot of you guys out there would love that, but realistically speaking, I just can't make sense of it. I can't, I can't make it make sense. He's hitting 232, six homers, 12 steals at the double A level. I have seen guys in the past get the call up especially top prospects go from double-A all the way to the majors, but we're gonna move him to the triple-A level because I do wanna see how he performs at the triple-A system, at the level there. And we're actually going to move up Alcides Escobar because again, we have another 40-man roster spot open. Plus he's really pissed off and I don't want him to be. Alcides, you know, he's uh, one of those dudes that helped KC win their World Series and was a very integral part of the team. So I want to give Alcides Escobar his due. We're going to add him to the 40. We're going to add him to the Major League system. Just again, just a little nice little addition here. Play some good defense. Give Mondesi some time off there at the shortstop spot. We can give Escobar his due. You know, the fans, we'll, we'll draw in the fans as we kind of are calling it quits. Basically, we don't want to piss off the season ticket holders. So Alcides Escobar are going to come on in here, be the backup for Mondesi, and we'll give Bobby Witt a shot when he proves to us that he can actually perform a little bit better. So now you have a little trickle effect that's going on here. So we've got some room here on our big league roster, which means that some AAA guys will have to move up, and some AA guys will move up to AAA. So now the single A, I'm looking at like Zach Hake with a B potential. Got to give him the move to double A. Juan Carlos Negret, maybe we give him the call to double A as well. Play some outfield there, get a, get a good feel. And I think we're going to give Juan Carlos Negret the chance at double A level. So now we got to go to the double A system. We got to see who we're going to go call up at the triple A, which I think Asa Lacey has deserved it. He's seven and five. 104 and 37 K to walk ratio. That's huge. 265, 122, or 112, I should say. You got to give him a chance. Go to AAA, show us what you got. Keep dealing, man. Keep dealing. Now, Evan Steele, 432, 156. I feel like you still need to go down there and you need to work out, work on that a little bit. Uh, I can't make that one make sense. Anderson Miller. I think the next best guy would be Jonathan Boland. So that's gonna be the move for us to go to AAA system. Now we look at AAA, see what we wanna do here. We did lose Mike Miner and we lost Greg Hollins. We lost two pitchers in this deal in our trades. So we have to call up two guys. And who are those two guys gonna be? I think it's Chris Bubich, 36.2 innings. You know, at the major league level, he was not good. Um, for us, he was three and seven through 60 innings with a seven five. So I think we can give him another shot. He pitched relatively well in 16 games, one nine six, one three four. I think you give him the chance. You move him to the bullpen though. 
that's what I think he's really got to focus on. I think he's going to be a bullpen arm for us because he's only got three pitches. And he's a lefty. We need another left-hander in that bullpen. Right now, it's only Daniel Lynch in our bullpen. Maybe he replaces Daniel Lynch. Maybe Daniel Lynch becomes a starter now. Maybe that's what we focus on with him versus only sticking him in the bullpen. So let's give Chris Bubich the call to the major league level and see how he performs. We'll focus on that. Next guy up, I think, is going to have to be... Mm, it's a tough call. It's a very, very tough call. We could either go with another starter. We could go with a bullpen arm like Irvin Santana. That'd be the nice little conservative moves. 38. Or we could go with Swarzak. I don't think Swarzak's on the 40, man. So that would make sense. We would be up to our 39 right there. So you get 37, 38. So you get Swarzak up here at the 40. I think that that makes some sense. So looking at contract extensions now, some of the guys that I'm thinking about possibly waiting on would be Brad Keller, Chris Bubich, and I mean Chance Adams. We can we can go ahead and we can sign here. So that's not that's not a problem. Uh, Scott Blewett, 23 years old. Let's go ahead and give him a contract for four years. He's probably going to be a minor league dude for the rest of his career. So might as well just solve that spot right off the get-go but you know brad keller bubich i mean rated 73 75 good potential ratings young players too 25 years old for keller and then bubich at 23 yeah i, I would love to bring these guys back it's just you know i want to see a little bit more down the stretch might as well just go ahead and extend out Daniel Lynch, we can give him a little bit of extra here. Maybe we can get him for three years a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, about 600K. I think he will take them. Maybe 433K. No? 466. That's fine. That's fine. That's exactly where I kind of want to be there. I didn't want to be anywhere close to a million dollars for Daniel Lynch, at least not yet. So I'm going to see what these guys do. Maybe we can address this in the offseason. Now, looking at the relief pitching, this is a position that, you know, I, I want to fix up a little bit down the line. So. There's guys here that I'm not particularly interested in other than the young dudes. So Zuber, yes, Jacob Junis, you know, we can bring you back, but that's a, that's, I mean, that's a lot. It's a lot. He's a 72 overall player. That's, that, that, that's a lot for a reliever in my opinion. Like we were paying that much for Greg Holland, right? But Jacob Junis, 28, you can get him until he's 30. I think that that's fine. Um, Let's get let's just get him signed. I pitch well with him in gameplay, so I'm okay with that. Scott Barlow, definitely want to bring him back, guys. 240, 47Ks, 19 walks. And he's a good pitcher. He's a good pitcher in that in the back end of the pen there. So we're gonna try to bring that down just a little bit. Try to get him to like 1.6, maybe 7, 8. Okay, so 1.8. We're spending a little bit on our young bullpen pieces. Zimmer for sure. Let's bring him back for at least two seasons. And let's again try to knock this down a little bit to 950. Same thing with Josh Stalmont. Like, there's just something about him in Sim that is just not working. He's 27, B potential. We might be able to solve setup pitcher, closing pitcher, maybe a little bit better than what Stalmont could give us, right? 581 is not good, but the stuff is there. I love the stuff. Maybe we just wait and see what happens. Nicky Lopez, I think he's the future at second base for us. So, I'm more than okay with extending him a little bit longer than he possibly should be. Uh, but about 1.4, that's perfectly fine for that type of player. Hunter Alberto, I think we got to give him the nod to come back. You know, it's hard to get rid of 99 contact and 90 vision. Really, really difficult to, to get rid of that. So I say let's get, bring him back on a one-year deal and let him get to about 2.2. If you want some longer contract, that's fine. We'll get we'll get you two more seasons with us, and 6.5 he takes it, so that's fine by me. I'll see this. Not gonna worry about that. Tyler Naquin definitely, definitely bringing him back. Maybe we ex get him to three years. I think Tyler Naquin is gonna be a really good player for us down the line. I think he's gonna be involved in our in our potential playoff runs with this Kansas City Royals team. Michael Taylor, tough call with Michael Taylor, guys. Really tough call. I love how he plays in 
in center field. I love it. I mean, and with those power numbers at 61 and 46, like that's, he's a good player. He's a good player. 77 overall, probably not asking for a ton of money, right? He wants a long contract. So I, I think giving him two, two seasons, but you know, he wants about 4.4, 4.5. And, uh, you know, I think that's fair for the amount of good defense that he's going to give us and okay batting average. I think it's not out of the question to go try to bring Michael Taylor back. Now, Jorge Soler is an interesting, interesting player here. If we want to bring him back for a long-term contract, we can get him until he's about 33 years old. And uh, it's hard to pass up on a guy like Jorge Soler, guys. 92 power, 82 power. He's in, he's, he's on our team. He's with us right now. Why do we want to let him go, right? 257, 30 home runs this year, 21 doubles. That's a pretty damn good season. I think he deserves it. I think if we can get him to like 6.5, he should be able to take that. 6.6 .6 was the final number. So I'm okay with Jorge Soler coming back here for about four more seasons. I, I really am. I, I had question marks about him at the very beginning of this franchise series on if we wanted to, you know, potentially trade him away, get get some really good value back just because of those power numbers are just juicy for the CPU. But I think he's way too valuable for our team in specific to get rid of him. Now, if he actually has some regression going on because he's a C potential, that's just, that's what we're just gonna have to deal with. But I think realistically speaking, it is it would be very hard for the Royals to get rid of a guy that's having a career year, he's 29, maybe eventually we could move on from it, we could trade him away, given those power numbers, if we start seeing regression. But because he's here on our team right now, how can you let a guy like that walk away, right? So we're gonna keep him, we're gonna hold on to him. So guys, let me know what you think about the new look Royals lineup and some of the decisions that we made uh, for AAA system call-ups, for MLB call-ups, and of course the contract extension phase. Did you agree with those decisions or not? I Again, I think that O'Hearn, McBroom, Bubich, Stelmont, Keller, I think all those guys that you see up there, they need to prove me something here in August and September if they're going to take their game to the next level. If they're not, you know, we might have to do a year-by-year -year type of basis here. It's hard to extend a guy and keep them on your team if you know, if you don't know if they're going to show any signs of improvement. Because right now, you know, Keller, that ERA, shooting up a little bit. Stalmont, again, ERA's bad. Bubich, ERA's bad. O'Hearn, McBroom, averages are not good. The power numbers are not necessarily there for a first baseman. So there's some question marks with those guys. I'm a little weary about extending them out. So let's go to the transactions and see all the trades that happened. Let's get a little bit of an update here. Let's go to trades and the Rays. Trade with the Orioles. Other than that, guys, that was it. That was it. Wow. So we had one move outside of the Royals wheeling and dealing. So the Rays acquired Michael Franco for Carlos Colmenares, Cal Stevenson, and Tyler Frank. So they gave up a little bit to go get Michael Franco. Rays really feeling like they need to fix up their corner infield spots because we also gave them um, Carlos Santana as well. So they got Santana and Michael Franco. So pretty good moves for the Rays to uh, shore that up. But interesting that there was only one move on trade deadline day. I've never seen that in the show, guys. And if you want to see the sliders here, look at the trade frequency. That's, that's pretty high. You know, this is default here, so it's two clicks after default. It's pretty crazy. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode. I will do some simulation here against the White Sox in that series, the Cardinals in that series. And we're going to head into the series against New York with Garrett Cole against Daniel Lynch. That's going to be a good series to kind of test where we're at on the barometer, on the scale. Did the trades help us with the young guys? 
you know, can we compete with those New York Yankees that are in first place in the AL East? I don't know if they're the best team in the league or not. I don't recall. However, but I do know that they're just a really, really good squad this year. So we're going to be tested in this one. We see the other opponents here up on the board. We got another series with St. Louis. We got two series with Houston. And, you know, maybe it was the wrong call to sell because all these teams, other than New York Yankees, are about mediocre, maybe sub 500 records. So we could have possibly made a little bit of a run here in August, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough call. It's a tough call. And now that we have Whit Merrifield out one to two months, you know, it, would that injury have happened? Was it guaranteed to happen? Was it just in the cards? We've lost seven straight games at this point heading into this New York series. So you know, which one came first, the chicken or the egg? Was it because we sold our pieces is why we've lost seven straight, or was that going to happen even though we kept our pieces? So either way, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. Leave a like if you like this thing. I will see you later on this week for episode six against the Yankees. As always, thank you for watching, and peace.